in a few short weeks, we will be chasing our tails, trying to keep up with the explosion of growth. Enjoy this month of relative calm, but not before you've powered up with my top 10 gardening jobs, including a deceptively simple way to stop weeds in their tracks before they've even had a chance to get started. Cast your mind back to last month when we started forcing this crown of rhubarb under here. I'll link to that video down below, but let's just take a little peek to see how it's getting on. There we go, actually. The buds have really fattened out and are really coming along, I think. It's obviously that extra warmth is making all the difference. I'll pop this back, but I reckon we'll be good to harvest in six to eight weeks. Just like my rhubarb, I can enjoy an early crop of strawberries. This time I don't need to cover them to make them dark, I just need to bring them into somewhere warmer like a cold frame or in my case, a greenhouse. These guys have already been outside all uh, winter long, so they've had a really good period of uh, chilling and that's important to help them initiate flower production and of course those fruits, they need that chilling period. So I'm just gonna tidy them up and then pot them up individually into fresh uh, potting mix just to give them a bit of a boost. I'm gonna be using a soil-based potting mix for these strawberries. It just has more body to it and because strawberries are perennials, I think they'll kind of prefer this mix. And I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of extra nutrition with a handful of blood, fish and bone like that. And just kind of stir it all in like this. Now when the plants start flowering, I will apply a liquid tomato feed. Now tomato feeds are higher in potassium, which will encourage more flowers and obviously help with fruit production going on from that. Now in this protected environment, it's obviously gonna be a lot warmer than outside. So I would expect these guys to start flowering sometime around mid spring, and they may well fruit before spring is even finished. And then I can always move them back outside once they are done. At that time of year, there can be a shortage of pollinators in the air. So what I might do is just tickle the center of each uh, flower with a little artist paintbrush just to transfer the pollen carefully like that, just to make up for the sort of lack of bees at that time of year. If you do want to try forcing strawberries like this, then do make sure you are potting up an early variety of strawberry. That way you will get your results much sooner, of course. By the middle of the month, both temperatures and light levels are finally beginning to pick up. Hurrah! In fact, on warm sunny days, the temperatures in any protected structure, such as a tunnel or greenhouse, can really start to soar. And that can lead to soft, fleshy, leafy growth. That's fine, but should it turn cold again, that could suddenly get whacked back. So, make sure to keep ventilation as good as possible by opening up all of the doors, vents and windows to get a good through flow of air so you don't get those wild swings in temperature. You can always close them at night, of course. This is where a maximum minimum thermometer can come in handy because it will enable you to keep an eye on temperatures and watch out for those extremes. Don't forget to carry on harvesting winter crops like kale, chard, leeks and uh, parsnips. Hardy heroes like these will help to keep the kitchen supplied and put a pep in your step at this rather dull time of year. Why not use the likes of uh, leeks and parsnips to create yourself a deliciously warming soup, perfect for warming the cockles after a cold spell out here gardening. There is one job I enjoy more than any other, I'd say, and that's transferring seedlings from recent sowings into their own plugs or pots. Now the gardening term for this is pricking out. And if you're new to gardening and have never done it before, well, please don't worry, it's very easy to do. And this is how I do it. So carefully remove the seedlings out from their pot. You can either scoot them up or if they're like this, I like to kind of jump them out like that. Oh, there we go, that's better. And then you can just use a spoon or I like to use a little chopstick occasionally to carefully break them apart like this. So you've got individual seedlings. Now with them all separated comes the delicate bit. Always handle the seedling by its leaf, never the, de the delicate stem or it could kind of crush or snap it. This has got a lovely root system already. Then make your hole with your chopstick or little stick or spoon or whatever and carefully 
guide the roots down and then just gently firm it in like that. Now, I like to do this pricking out while the seedlings are still quite small and that way there isn't too large a root system and it's easier to guide them into the holes you make. Sometimes the roots hang on to more potting mix like this and you can just kind of put in a whole sort of clump of uh, soil from the original nursery pot into its new home. So as I say, do them nice and young. There's no point waiting till they're too big. And if you'd like to know more about starting off seedlings, then we've got a video on that, would you believe it? And I will pop a link to that down below. With most of winter over, birds have had plenty of time to peck around and get rid of overwintering grubs that might cause a problem next season. So now is a great time to get on and mulch around fruit bushes, fruit trees and canes. Mulching with organic matter will help to nourish the soil and by extension the fruits growing in it. Now I'm using part decomposed leaves to mulch around these uh, gooseberry bushes here, but you could use garden compost or indeed something like wood chips. Anything that will eventually rot down and feed the soil. Just be careful to keep the very base of the stem clear of your mulch so it doesn't sit against it and potentially cause problems with rotting. Ah, oh, <laughs> there's my shoe. I've been looking for this. We've had quite a bit of wind here and I keep them outside by the back door and it's blown away. Glad to have found it. Now's also a good time to plant uh, fruit trees and bushes, new ones. You can plant them as bare root plants or indeed container grown plants and planting at this time of year gives them a few more weeks to produce roots and settle down into position before the growing season really begins. Now, most fruit plants like a sunny spot in rich, well-drained soil, and uh, that'll help them to really thrive. This is my cherry tree, which I planted four years ago, and it's come on uh, really well since then. And if you'd like to see my video when I planted it, I'll link to that below. Normally I throw my kitchen waste onto the compost heap, but there is another way to make use of it, by burying it underneath where hungry plants like uh, beans and squash family plants will go. Digging what's called a compost pit is as easy as digging a hole and popping in your organic or kitchen waste. Now it wants to be about a uh, 30 centimetres or one foot deep and of course you need to put your pits where you're going to plant your plants so you'll need to know that in advance because obviously you want the plant on top of all that uh, organic goodness. Now, if you're a bit behind in your garden planning, please do not worry, there's plenty of time. Why not get yourself started with a free trial of our garden planner and I'll pop details of that down below. You can add your kitchen waste in uh, stages or in one go like this. However you do it though, do make sure that you cover it up with some soil between fillings just to stop local wildlife showing an interest. Then once you're done, just return all of the soil like that and it will of course leave a bit of a mound but that's absolutely fine it'll settle down over the next months ready for planting now if you're a bit of a bird brain like me and prone to forget just thrust in something like a stick like that so you know where your planting pits are any body of water like this no matter how small will provide valuable habitat for wildlife now i am very lucky to have both frogs and toads in my garden they really like the slightly longer grass in many areas and of course this pond no doubt helps though in the heat of summer i can find them lurking in just about any tub of collected rainwater this pond is looking a bit forlorn and neglected, so let's put that right now. And the first job is just to pull away some of this grass that's grown into it from around the sides. That's looking a bit better now. Now it's absolutely clogged with leaves that have fallen. Ideally, I should have maybe covered it during the uh, autumn fall, but never mind. I'm going to remove most of them out. Now, there's a bit of sludge at the bottom and I'll keep that because that's valuable habitat. But I'm just getting the worst of these leaves out because if they rot, they'll create a bit of a sort of stinky, uh, lacking oxygen environment. I'm just putting them quite close to the pond so if there is anything in here, it can kind of escape back into the water. 
I've managed to disturb a frog, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave it there. And now to finish, I'm just gonna top up with uh, some collected rainwater here, just to bring it back up to the level. Now you'll notice at the sides here, there are some rocks, so that anything that comes in can get back out again and vice versa, gives an easy in and out access ramp to this pond. Later on in spring, I'm going to uh, get the balance back by planting some more marginal plants around the edge and submerged plants as well to uh, keep the water nice and oxygenated. But it's great to see there are indeed frogs in there. Weeds have a habit of popping up right at the start of the season. In fact, they're actually quite a good indicator that spring is pretty much with us. Also, their appearance is a good cue that many cool season crops can now be sown. I often find that my garden compost does get a little bit on the weedy side, and I don't want little weeds popping up at the same time as my seedlings. So one way around this is to jump ahead and get the weeds to germinate before I get sowing. One option to raise the soil temperature is to use some sort of glass pane like this. This has been salvaged from a, a window. That'll raise the soil temperature nicely. And then once the weed seedlings are popped up, you can go in with a hoe and just uh, hoe it all off to leave a nice clean seed bed ready for sowing or planting into a week or two later. Most people don't have window panes lying around, but perhaps you have something like this clear plastic here. Just anchor it down and even this will warm the soil enough by one or two degrees and that will shunt the whole growing season in there forward by as much as two weeks, giving you that competitive advantage. And then once those weeds are up, as I say, just hoe them off and you're good to go. One of the first cool season crops that can be sown is radish. Now radishes are one of the very earliest uh, new season crops to be harvested and they're very hardy as well. They can germinate in temperatures as low as 41 Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius. Mark out your rows into well-drained soil that has been raked to a fine tilth and I'm going to grow two rows here, so I'm going to space them about eight inches or 20 centimetres apart. And now to sow them, and I'm going to take the time to pick up each seed individually to sow it about an inch or two centimetres apart. Now this does take a little bit of time, not much, but what it will do is save you time later on trying to thin out the seedlings. This way there'll be none of that, you can just keep them watered, let them grow on until it's time to harvest them. And now just uh, cover them over. Now it's still a bit chilly here, so these could do with a little bit of protection. You could use a low kind of tunnel, for example, or something like this glass pane here. I'm gonna create a little bit of a sort of box frame here. I've got the frame of the bed itself, and then if I put this plank here like that, it's raised slightly, the glass, above the soil level and that will trap it in just like a mini greenhouse. Now it's not the prettiest thing but it does work. If I pop it like that we've created a nice little micro climate in here. I'll remove these glass panes once the seedlings are up and then they'll just grow on and I can harvest them once they reach well radish size which at this time of year should be around seven to eight weeks. Do check out our recent sewing video, by the way, which includes some great ideas of what to sew now. And I'll include a link to that at the end of the video. In addition to what was sewn in that video is cucumber. And there is nothing, simply nothing as cool as a cucumber. Now they're great to sow from later on in the month if you're going to grow them on in a greenhouse or you live in a warmer climate. If you don't, maybe wait until next month. You'll never guess how many seeds there are in here. Four, but I guess that's what you get when you pay for a, uh, a good hybrid variety. Hey, there's actually five, bonus. Well, we're winning, aren't we? Let's get them sown. I've got pots here of sieved all-purpose potting mix, and then to sow these very expensive seeds, I'm gonna sow them on their sides like that, about half an inch or just over one centimetre deep. There we go, and then cover them back over. These will get a nice drink and then go indoors into the warm to germinate. Now, with a combination of sunny window sills and grow lights, 
These should grow on nicely, kept well above freezing, and then they'll come out here later on in spring, and that should give us a slightly earlier uh, chance to harvest those fruits. These are gonna head indoors onto my heat mat. I love growing cucumbers. Once they start, there is really no stopping them. And we will be doing a deep dive into cucumbers later on in spring. So do subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that one. Keep busy, get your hands dirty, and keep smiling because gardening makes your soul sing. I'll catch you next time.